Let's see. I think we're up and running. It's after class on Monday. And I am about to put a cubic and graphing form. And uh, hopefully you looked at the other two videos first. All right, so let's do a general sketch of what that looks like. I know 5x minus 10 is what we call a tangent. A tangent is shares a rate of change at an instant and change in a, uh, in a data point. So 0, negative 10. So not only do I know the y-intercept, but I know that at this instant, I'm going up at 5 to 1. That's going to make it bend. How much? We don't know until we find the point of inflection. The point of inflection comes from the x value of minus b over 3a, and then f of minus b over 3a, providing I call this f of x now. I suppose I could have said y of minus b over 3a. So that's the next thing we have to do. We have to find that value, and so that's positive 12 over 3, 4. So I guess it's a value of four. Ah, I wanted a smaller number, but that's okay. I want to make sure I am fatigued here. I want to make sure I'm not making any careless errors. Four. So that's 64. Without doing this out, should be positive minus 192 because it's a three to one ratio. Nine times negative 12. That's not even so. I, I really botched that, didn't I? 64. Um, oh, squared, squared. 16 times negative 12, I can trust that. 5 times 4, 20 minus 10. That should be the y value at the point of inflection. So if this is minus 10, uh, I don't want to put an x-axis in. I'm going to look for roots later. So this gets me uh, twice that, negative 128. When I do that, add 20 minus 108, minus 118. I hope I didn't make any mistakes. So minus 118 would be way, well, let's, let's actually call this zero, 10 times, now that's not even, that's too much, let's call that zero. And if that's zero, that's 10 units, so I got about 12 of those down here, and if that's four, let's call it that. That's concave down, and then concave up, and that's our graph, and this is, um, what did I call it? Four comma negative 118. All right. Can you see that? Yeah, pretty much. All right. So what is the rate of change here? From a non-calculus standpoint, you can find that rate of change by C minus 3A H squared, which in this case, C is 5. Minus 3A is 1. H is 4. That's the x value of the point of inflection. That's 5 minus 48. So I'm actually going down at 43 to 1 right here. That's how my y values are changing. And if you wanted to prove that to yourself, you could go to a table. You could put 4 in, get minus 118. You could put 4.01. That's where I start my calculus classes. You're going to get f of 4.01. And you can do f of 4.01 minus f of 4 over 4.01 minus 4. You can do a little slope work with a couple of places that are right next to each other to get a sense of how you're changing in an instant. If you were to do that up here, I hope you can see that that tangent has a slope of 0. That's how you find maxes and mins in calculus. Uh, and basically, we learn the formulas that go with doing that. On the video I gave you, I don't expect you to use this. I don't think anybody does. It, it, the x value is centered. You know, it's got an axis of symmetry here, sort of. And so it's centered at 4. And you're going plus or minus the square root of minus m, which is the uh, slope of <laughs> that value right there, over 3a. All right, and that would get you this x value. Okay, but the world doesn't seem to know that. So you find it with calculus, you learn that in a future class. All right, did I do anything? Oh, maybe we'll put it in graphing form, why not? So if uh, I can find an eraser here. You're gonna find this equation using calculus. 
Okay, you're going to find the, uh, the uh, not that one, you're going to find uh, this equation here, minus 43. Well, you're, you're going to see it now, but you'll do it with calculus. Uh, this graphic stuff isn't out there. So that equation could have been written, I wish I hadn't erased it. That equation could have been written as the A term, which was one. So X minus four cubed minus 43, X minus four minus 118. If you multiply that out, you should get the original equation. And in calculus, you take derivatives to find this equation. I don't think people realize that if you just tuck that in there, <laughs> you got the original equation because that's the graphing form. All right. So that was just a little addendum to the work you're doing now. And there's that video. I should probably wait till I make the next video for the other group because I'm getting a little squirrely. Here we go. Uh, and the meeting. And for all.